Big Daddy here with another video in the series of customizing KDE Plasma 5. So in the last video, uh, we were under desktop behavior and desktop effects. And I apologize for the length of that video, but in order to show everything that these effects could do one by one and to not split the video up, which I didn't think that was a good idea either, um, it had to go that long. But moving on, we are on screen edges. So this is where the screen edges are set and where the options for the window tiling are. So these are each individual boxes are able to be set individually to a, a specific action. So, but I do not, do not, I do not use um, these three over here because I have a second monitor and in order to activate these I have to go all the way over to the left of my second monitor which is not feasible to do so uh, the bottom one here I do not use either because I have the plank on window dodge and when I need to activate plank I need to go to the bottom so that's not exactly a good thing either because it will activate whatever I have set here I do have the top activated. It's supposed to, it's set right now to do the current desktop. So if I open up a, a uh, another window and I go up here, it'll present either my all my windows on my desktop and I can pick from them. I have the right one, right corner, set to the application launcher, which you have to understand with KDE and you know, I've tried to do this video a couple different times and sometimes it just don't work the way they're supposed to. So I have it set to uh, the application launcher. Now you notice when I do the apply, you shouldn't have to do apply because it's on the same one that's already there. All right, but as you see now, now the, the uh, application dashboard comes up, which it should come up even without that. Um, this I have set to the desktop grid where it shows your all of your desktops if you have them and this is another setting where if you don't if you only have one virtual desktop set up it's not going to show it's not going to do anything so um that's what i have set on the right one on the bottom one i have or i'm sorry on the yeah on that one on the bottom one i have the alternative window switching so i can hit alt tab and my default window switcher is the cover flow but the bottom right corner I've set to the alternative uh, window switcher which we'll get to in the window management video but my alternative one is actually the breeze default one so that's what I have set but you can set these to anything from like for example I have this set to present the windows on the current desktop, which is nice, but it's also nice to have the run command set to that as well. So when you go up here, it'll actually bring up KRunner, which is a nice, nice quick way to get to it. Um, and there's multiple things that you can do with it. Um, you can have it set to show the desktop. So uh, like if we can switch this, you'll so show the desktop and you'll activate it again if you don't want to have a button up here for it which I don't know why I have a show desktop button there because I don't I don't use it and well I can always set a hot corner to it so but either way uh, you can do a lock screen now I don't know if I would do a lock screen because sometimes you like if you have these you got to be selective in where you put these because you may be going up here to do this and do a system tray uh, thing and you may go too far and end up going and if you have that set to the lock screen it may lock your screen by accident now the delay on these are set to 150 uh, milliseconds which is good in some situations because it doesn't activate it automatically so you have less mistakes as far as when they activate it but you do have to hold it there for a pretty long time, I mean, even though it's 150 milliseconds, it, it kind of like messes up with, I don't know if it's K-Win or what, but uh, it kind of, certain ones come up instantly and certain ones just take, they don't, you, as you see, I'm up here in this right corner and it's not working. 
So if I switch this down to 50 milliseconds, they come up pretty instant and they work much better. So that's a setting that I would say that you definitely would be interested in switching around because although the delay is there so that you make less mistakes, it actually goes against the flow and kind of makes it hard to reach some of the corners. Not sure why it's supposed to work with just the delay, but I found that that setting is better. All right, the reactivate reactivation delay is okay for 350 milliseconds, although 150 milliseconds activates slower than the actual reactivation delay at 350. So go figure. And uh, this here is to switch the desktop on the edge. And what this does is it allows you to go and take things over to your other desktop. So like you can do only when moving windows or always enabled. So when you do this and always enabled, you're losing the other edges. Okay. And when you hit apply, you're losing them edges, but you can take this, drag this window over to another desktop and you can keep going with it and go to a third desktop and keep drag. You get the point. Okay. So we're going to go back to, uh, our main one here. So that's what that feature does is to switch the desktop on the edge. So you're basically switching to the second desktop or the third or how many ever you got. Now that you can switch that only when moving windows as well and that will do just what I showed you. But the default is disabled and that's where I leave it because like I said the only reason that I have more virtual desktops right now is because of showing you these settings because these are again settings that unless you have certain settings elsewhere by the at default they won't they don't work as advertised so in order to use this switch desktop on edge obviously you need more than one desktop I mean yes I understand that that is you know when you're looking at it that way of course you do but when you're coming in here as a new person looking at settings, you're saying, what does this do? And you click it and nothing happens. You're like, eh. and you go out and you don't really get the full effect of everything. So it would be nice if all this was explained somewhere and you know, Hey, that's what we're here to do. So, all right. So we skipped over this window management part here because I got ahead of myself. But anyway, you would think that these two settings under the window management little box here would be in the window management settings but they're not because sometimes KDE kind of I think they overthink things sometimes and move uh, settings to where they overthink it where you think you might want it to be but it's not just right there where it normally would be like you know sometimes you're you got you're thinking about something and you're thinking about something and you're like all messed up about it and somebody comes walking over and say hey why are you doing that just do this <laughs> and you're like what <laughs> So anyway, the wheels are going off the track again. All right, back to the video. Um, this is for maximizing the windows by dragging them. So when you drag a window all the way to the top, it maximizes it, which is a really cool feature. And this one is for dragging them to the side of the screen. So when you drag something to the side of the screen, it snaps it in place. You can drag it to the corner and it'll snap it in that half. And if you have another window, and this is a problem that I have with KDE, like example, exhibit one, exhibit A, like why does this happen? Why does it happen that KWrite opens past the edge when the last time I opened KWrite, it was in a box like, like this big. And now all of a sudden it opens full all the way where you can't even get to it. <laughs> these okay these are the little things that make kde make people that use kde try other distributions because there are so many settings and so many good things about it and then all of a sudden this happens and you're like what the anyway um well the only way i know to get out of this one is to unlock the widgets, go into your settings, and hit auto hide. And now I can get up there maybe and drag that window down 
and resize it and drag this window down and get out of the way and then go back into my settings and hit always visible and then I'll lock it so that it doesn't uh, change now there's a big daddy video for you in real time where things go wrong well anyway at least you can get out of that if you uh, maybe you have a better way of getting out of that I don't know but that happened to me before and the only way that I could figure out to get out of it was that so now I wonder if it'll happen if I open k right again look at that <laughs> I don't understand man <laughs> Okay, so we're just going to close k right and we'll worry about that later. So continuing on, um, that is the tiling and the edging of the screen. So uh, next is screen locking, which I don't really use, so I uncheck that. I do have it to set lock on resume because when I do suspend, I want it, usually I'm going to work or something and I want it to be have to enter my password before it comes up. I don't don't want somebody to be able to just jump on my computer. Now, you can change you have this is the default color for uh Plasma 5. You can change it to any color you like or you could change it to an image of your choice. So, let's uh I'm not going to lock the screen because that would be ridiculous in this kind of a video, but uh I am going to change this for my own intents and purposes and uh, change it so the next time uh, it does lock it gets the one I want okay so that is basically the screen locking now if you do do this you can set it to whatever time you want and you can require your password for logging in or just if you if you don't want to require your password you don't have to now you can change the uh, shortcut where this is control L will lock the screen. Uh, you can change it to whatever you want. Moving on to virtual desktops, this is where I have more than one and I am going to make that uh, down to one because like I said I don't I haven't yet to find a use for it that is compelling that I can't do in a normal normal flow. Uh, switching this is where, uh, in, if you remember in the desktop effects where we checked either the desktop cube animation slide or fade desktop, this is you can change the same setting here and you can get to the actual settings of the animation as well. I'm not sure what desktop switch on screen display does because I did check that and didn't see any difference in anything. I'm sure somebody can help out and let us know what that does. And here is your keyboard switches to the shortcuts to uh, switch and go through each of your desktops. Under accessibility you have uh, modifier keys, sticky keys. I don't know why anybody would, I mean maybe there's a reason why somebody would use sticky keys. I just don't, I just never found out why they would use sticky keys. Um, you use your system bell whenever locking gets activated or deactivated. I don't ever do any of these types of settings and the under accessibility I never change anything but let's quickly go through them you can uh, delay your keys you can use bounce keys uh, you can have activation gestures for activating sticky keys um, and you have a screen reader so uh, some of these are for you know helping people out but they're not anything that I'm going to use now activities is another I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not even sure of the difference between activities and virtual desktops. Like, it seems like the same principle to me. Um, KDE, uh, everybody else calls them virtual desktops. KDE calls them activities. But yet they have virtual desktops as well. So I'm not sure what the difference or what the plus is. Nobody has ever mentioned what they are. Now, there are settings in here for that, for, you know, I guess if you want an activity maybe uh, and you want to keep something hidden or secret or I don't know maybe you can uh, switch activities and I don't know all I know is I don't use it so and again like I said if you come in here and you do anything 
goofy and your system's acting up, just come here, hit the defaults, and it'll go back to the way it was by default, and you'll be good to go. So I think that's going to be it for this one. We're going to end it right there. And the next one, we'll head into window management, which is another big, huge hole. All right. Until then, Big Daddy out.